All right, I wanna thank y'all for tuning the video today. Today, it may be a little bit longer video, but we're gonna go into fuel treatment, DPF, I-dash, emission systems, things like that, fuel mileage. The reasons why you wanna monitor your DPF, okay? Um, I'll explain what a DPF is real quick for you. So a DPF is basically a resistance in your exhaust, right? It's like a, it's like a honeycomb mesh. And then what it does is when you're driving down the highway, it, it senses the resistance, it builds heat in that honeycomb, and basically what it does, this is the 30,000 foot view, guys. What it does is it burns off all the unburned fuel, stuff like that, okay? So that's why on a diesel, a newer diesel truck, it doesn't smell like diesel at the exhaust pipe, right? Because you've got this thing that's getting hot in there, it's catching any unburned fuel, and it does a pretty good job of it, okay? Now, things to think about is when your engine is, you know, 15, 1600 RPM, it's under a load, you're building good heat, and all those things are perfect, it does really great, right? And that system stays warm, it, it catches it, 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 you know what I mean? But what it does is as it catches that stuff, it builds up in there, okay? So every once in a while, we have to have what we call regeneration. Now, regeneration is when sometimes the truck actually pumps fuel into the exhaust, and it gets it heated up to close to by 1200 degrees, you know, 1000, 1200, somewhere in that area, gets that catalyst really hot so it can basically burn off those impurities that are on stuck to the honeycomb and then it, it basically burns that off as ash and then it blows it out as ash, okay? Now, now that we've went through that, what we're gonna talk about is it does create back pressure on your system, okay? So your fuel mileage and all those things are gonna be a little worse towards your the end of that okay because there's there's four things that are monitored on a on a dpf system you've got a pre and post temperature and then you've got a pre and post pressure okay and how it understands that it's starting to get plugged up or it comes up with a number is it's looking at the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure and it can see the difference in between that pressure so the more plugged up it is that's what the ECM is going to give you as far as a percentage of DPF plug, okay? And so, saying all that, when your engine's up and you're running and you're towing a trailer down the highway, you know, that's why they say diesels do really well down the highway. You, you get everything warmed up, system's working great, you're making less emissions, okay? Now, not less emissions, but less soot, okay? So, whenever you're idling, that's why everybody says, oh, don't idle a diesel, all those good things, right? So, when you're sitting there idling, that percentage is clicking up really fast because you know you may have three or four hundred degrees of exhaust temp it's not enough to keep it all the way burned up burned off and so it's going to sit there and it's going to sit up okay so it will fill up faster while you're idling okay that brings me to the bank's i dash or any kind of monitor you want to use right i always look at the dpf percentage and then whether it's in active region or not in region okay now I'll show you on my iDash right now that you can see the, the, the PIDs that I monitor. So you can see at the top, I like my fuel level as a percentage, so I can see 48%, it matches the gauge. And um, the other thing is you can see my DPF's at 92%, and you can see my regen is off. Now what happens, I'll, I'll link a video in here in just a sec and show y'all, when that gets to 100, usually within about, you can see it just went to 93, we're just sitting here idling. So what'll happen is when it gets to 100, usually within about three or four minutes, it'll go active. So as you can see in the video that we're at 100%, this is what an active regen looks like when you're driving down the highway. Okay, when it goes active, that's when it starts kind of injecting the diesel in the fuel. It's gonna get that exhaust up. And that's when you notice like your exhaust tip and your exhaust is really hot. You hear your def pump clicking. That's basically in regen cycle, but this is telling me it's active. What I know by looking at 93% and sitting here idling is on my next drive, it's going to need to do a regen, okay? And so I probably have the most back pressure on my engine right now because I'm 93% plugged, right? And so when I go drive this truck next time, it takes about seven miles of highway, seven to eight miles, running, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, and it will do a clean out, and that clean out will drop, you know? And we're going to talk about the fuel treatment in just a minute. Some of those stock cleanouts without the fuel treatment, I was dropping down to about 10%. So it would, it would complete the cycle. You'd come up, your DPF regen would be about 10%. Then you start over, right? And so, you know, just standard driving city and highway, 
you know, I get 150, 220 miles before a regen. If I'm out pulling the trailer on the highway, I may get 400 miles in between regen. So everybody's regen is different. Now, also, if I'm gonna check my mileage, right, if I'm running around with a 90% plugged and I'm driving in the city all the time and the truck's not getting hot enough to complete a full regen, then it's gonna get worse mileage because you have more back pressure on your engine, okay? So, one of the good reasons in monitoring is, is knowing, okay, next run, I'm gonna go drought and drive it. I'm gonna get that seven or eight miles on the highway. And a lot of times I'll even downshift from 10th down to eight. I like to get it up to about 17, 1800 RPM. That's the peak. That's when you can get to the fastest clean out, you know? And once it cleans out, temperatures come back down. You've got a, a clean DPF. And that's where the fuel treatment will come in. And I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, this is our tool, you know, everybody, and I did a poll on my channel. A lot of people run the hot shots. I'm not affiliated with them. You run any of them. And it's not just because, let's say you get, a, you know, a mile per gallon, okay? And a lot of people look at it. But if you're running one of these new emission systems, these actually boost the cetane levels, which gives you a little cleaner burn, okay? And so you get a little bit longer in between regenerations. And then also, what I've noticed is I'll get down to a 2%, like on a stock without running an additive, you know, it would do a full regen cycle. I come back and be like 12 or 15%, right? Since I started running additives, I'm getting down to two and 3% on my regens, okay? Now, the other thing we're gonna discuss is just knowing when you need to do a regen. So is it okay to idle your diesel? Yeah, I think it's okay to idle your diesel. You know, I know that if I get to 100% here, if I'm at 93, I'm not just going to let this truck sit and idle. I'll turn it off, you know, if I'm going to be sitting somewhere. Or I'll go drive it, let it complete its cycle. And then if we're, you know, if we're down to, you know, less than right at 100%, we'll let it go ahead and, and do its thing. And it's fine to idle it if you're not sitting at 100%. The truck needs to do a region, okay? So to, I guess to basically to say to extend the life of your emission system and your DPF and all that stuff is basically knowing when it needs to do it. Because if I'm just driving around town and it's trying to start and let's say it gets the temperature up and then, you know, three or four minutes later, I'm sitting at a red light, temperature drops down, it goes from active to off. And then it's waiting for that temperature to get back up to where it can start again. You don't even know that's going on unless you have a monitor, okay? And so you could be driving that truck for a week in town and it's trying to do a regen. You don't have a clue it's trying to complete the cycle, okay? And so your mileage is gonna be worse. It's dumping fuel in the exhaust. And if you don't do a full complete, like, so if you get that thing heated up and you get it ready, you know, and it starts to act, you know, you're gonna convert that stuff to ash and it start try to blow it out. And then you shut it down, that's really bad for it. You want to let the truck do a full complete cycle, okay? And let it get it done and then you're good. So monitoring it's important and depending on when you're testing your fuel mileage you know if you're going to run a treatment all of those things come into play but if you don't see what it's doing and guys it doesn't matter whether you're driving a ford a gm a ram all of these systems and some people will have problems with their emission systems and they don't know why why am i getting a check engine light you know my 23 did it right um and then i put an eye dash on it started monitoring never had a problem you know it took it, it cleared itself check engine light went off but basically that's what's gonna happen. If you're driving around and it's trying to do a regen and it doesn't get it done, eventually check engine light's gonna come on and still if it doesn't get it done, then you're gonna take it to the dealer and they're gonna have to force a regen on it so that it can get cleaned out. Okay, that's not good for so, your system. Anyway, I, I am an advocate for, for buying a monitor. I mean, the bank's eye dash works really good, um, you know, just to kind of see what's going on with it. Um, and then the other thing is, is if I pull into my driveway and it's just completed a cycle, you know, and the exhaust is really hot and all those things, I'll let it cool down for a few minutes. And sometimes you'll notice you'll put it in park and the truck will actually be at 800 RPM after the cycle. And it's actually cooling the exhaust down at 800 RPM in an idle. Okay, so I'll let it idle for a few minutes, then I'll turn it off, let it cool back down. Okay, so anyway, I just know a lot of people have asked a lot of questions about DPF. They've asked about the, the, the Banks I-Dash and then they've asked about the fuel treatment. I have noticed a one to two mile per gallon um, but I've also noticed I was getting about an average of 150 to 200 miles on my um, regens before I ran this. Same driving. Now I'm getting almost 350 miles before regen. So it is saving the fuel. 
and I am getting a little bit longer in between the regions and I'm getting full clean outs. I'm down to 2%. So guys, I mean, whether you wanna run hot shots, you wanna run this, you know, I mean, and you may just still wanna run standard diesel and that's fine. Um, you know, and I'm not saying the trucks have to have a monitor. They don't, for the most part, they're gonna take care of it. But if you're driving a diesel and you live in town, I definitely would recommend putting something on it to where you can monitor whether it's going in and out, right? Diesels are made to be ran on the highway. They're made to have a load on them and stuff like that. So it's just the way it is. So I hope I've answered some of y'all questions today because like I said, I've had a lot of people say, what is a regen? You know, why do you run I dash? All those things. And guys, I'll tell you, I've had the Ram, I've had the Ford, the ones that actually have it in the display. Hey, I can see my DPF filter. You know, it sits there and says zero all the time. And then it basically just goes to 100 when it's doing a regen. That doesn't give you a lot of information. That doesn't tell you, hey, you know, when am I gonna make my next fuel stop? If I'm in the middle of an active regen, I'm gonna let it finish, you know, all those things. And so, anyway, you know, and, and you don't have to do anything. You can just drive them, you know, but if you want the best fuel mileage, and you want your emission system to last and all those good things, then some of these things are some of the things you should pay attention to. You know, if you're gonna buy a new truck, you know, sell it, you're not gonna have it long term, you're not really worried about it, then it may be a different answer for you. But again, if the video helped you any today, please hit the like and subscribe. I tried to cover the 30,000 foot view. There's a lot more detail into the soot level and other stuff like that that you can monitor also. But just wanted to kind of hit the surface level on it today and hope you understand it. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. And if the video helped you again, please hit that like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video.